Hello and thank you for joining Paper Crafting with Tracy. Today I'm going to show you um, an embossing technique with water coloring and we're actually going to um, uh, take some of the wash away some of the watercolor. So um, these are a couple examples that I have. Okay, uh, This one here I did a watercolor um, in a bit of a uh, rainbow design and then I, I put in a stamp there and then I washed it away. This one here was done with the poppies. And then I offset some there. So today I'm going to be using the Delicate Petals uh, stamp set. And so what I'm going to start with is I'll just get my scrap piece of paper behind. You can see I've used it many times. And I'm starting off with a piece of watercolor paper. Stampin' Up! has this paper. It comes in a little package like this. And um, it allows you to get it quite wet, wet without it breaking down the, the fibers in the paper. So I'm going to be using Gorgeous Grape. I find for this technique, the darker you use the color, the more effective it'll work. So I'm going to use just one color for this sample, and I'm only using a small amount. Now, to watercolor with this, uh, you can open up. I've already, you can see where I've done it before, but before you open it up, if you give it a good squeeze, and I find these new cases um, don't flex quite as well, but if you squeeze them a couple of times just with your wrists, and then open it up, then you can get some in there. I'm going to squeeze it a little bit more to get some ink in the lid. There we go. Then Stampin' Up! has these water painters. Okay, they come in a package of three with different heads on the top. So I'm going to use this one, and you just fill the base with some water. Okay. So all I'm going to do is just squeeze it a little bit, or push it as it says, to get some water down into the head, and then we'll just ink up. And I'm just going to go over this quite a bit. Okay, and again, get some water down into there because it works much better, as you can see, once you get some more water. If I was doing a large area like when I did the other one, I actually had just a little cup of water because um, it, it helped to soak it up or to spread it a little better. So I just want to color the whole thing and I want it actually quite dark. So, just get it all over this. I think I'm going to need some more ink on there. So we'll ink it up some more, because like I said, I want it quite dark. And now this is where I end up with it all over my hands. Particularly in the center where... I'm going to be stamping. That's yeah, about almost as dark as I want it now. Just make sure down at the end here it gets fairly dark. Maybe I'll switch directions here a little bit. So in the center there, it's fairly dark. So I'm just going to put that aside. Now you can leave it to dry, or I'm actually going to use my heat embossing tool just to speed up the process. Okay, it will cause the, the paper to fold or curl a little bit, but that's okay. It flattens out again easy. And you can see once it dries, then it uh, stopped curling. I'm not so worried about these corners that I haven't done yet, because those will get done when I come back around to it. Okay, so just make sure it's very dry. There we go. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to stamp on my image. 
And I'm going to do that using Versamark and I'm going to emboss uh, the image with some clear embossing powder. So I'll just, I'm going to use these two flowers. So we'll just get that on the block here, ink it up. Okay, and you want to make sure you got, oh, and before I do that, uh, you want to take your embossing buddy and just go over just to get rid of any extra static because otherwise you're going to end up with um, embossing powder where you don't want it. So I'm just going to stick those on like so. Okay, and of course you can't see anything. So we'll get our clear embossing powder here. And there's where you can see where it actually stamped it. Tap it all off, the excess. Make sure you always cover your embossing powder before you get your heat gun out. Or you will just end up with a giant glob. And now we will heat set this. And you can see, all it does is take your image away. But if you turn it, I'm not sure if you can see that there, there's a shine where the image is. Okay, make sure everything's all heat set. Okay. So, the next step we're going to do is actually wash away some of that watercolor. Now, the one thing I've forgotten, I'll just quickly grab it, is a cloth or a wet wipe. Okay, so I've got my wet wipe here. And all you want to do is go over with your um, painter again and start going over it with lots of water. Just like that, just putting lots of water on it. And then you're just going to take your cloth and start wiping it away. And you can see your image stays because the embossing um, powder, once you've set it, keeps the image there. So we'll just continue to wipe away some of this extra. Make sure all down there is... And you can make it as dark or as light as you want. Let's see if I can get any more off of there. The key to this, though, is getting the paper very wet. Yeah, see, I got it a little bit lighter, so I'll just go over a tiny bit more. So this is where your jar of, of paint, or of water, would come in handy. There we go. I think that's about all that I want to take off. So I'll just get this stuff that's wet out of the way. And now we'll take our heat gun again and just dry the paper. So. And that, drying it, lightens it up a tiny bit as well. Okay. So you can see how that turned out. So now because I'm finished with the watercolor, I'll move my scrap piece of paper. So with the two examples that I had before, you can see this one with the rainbow design, um, it, how it changed. Now you can see here, I must have had a little bit lighter with the original watercolor because the stamped image wasn't quite as dark right there in the center, but then the rest of it turned out. Okay, and then this one here, I just did it with some oranges and reds in there and then washed it away. So now it's a matter of putting our card together. 
So I'm going to mat this uh, with some darker um, uh, purple behind it. So the um, gorgeous grape behind. We'll just get, I'm going to use the Stamp and Seal Plus just because this has been wet and dried a couple times. So you can see it's not fully uh, straight. And the Stamp and Seal Plus is a little bit stronger. And watercolor paper is actually thicker as well. So I want to make sure that it adheres quite well and just make sure I get down into the corners uh, because it does curl a tiny bit. So we'll put that in place. There we go. And I think I'll stick it that way. And then I'm just using a piece of basic white cardstock. And I think I'm going to just stick it in the center there. Actually, I'm going to change it around. I'm going to go this way. So we'll tape this one down now. Oops, went over the edge there. So we'll just fold it over. And that one is on, so I will put that in place now. And I'm going to have it a little bit higher because I'm going to stamp a sentiment underneath. There we go. So the sentiment I'm going to put in there from this, I'm going to put, I'm so happy you're my friend. So we'll just pull that out. And I'll get my longer block here. And again, um, sometimes with the stamp, especially when they're narrow like this, they bend very easily if you're just putting them on the block. So I find if I stick it in place, lay it kind of where I want it, oops, without sticking it to my fingers, then stick it on your block, then it, it uh, doesn't have the bit of a bend to it. So I'm going to stamp this in the gorgeous grape. So we'll just ink up okay, so I'm so happy you're my friend oops I can see where I over stamped it a little bit I'll just get those off one more here there we go and then I'm going to take some of this gorgeous grape ribbon that's in the uh, uh, January to June catalog, this sheer ribbon, and I've tied a bow in it. So I'll just get my ribbon scissors here. So my ribbon scissors, I have a little piece of ribbon on there. So remember, I only use it for ribbon because cutting cardstock and other things dulls your ribbon after a bit. And I'm just going to put this bow on the card. So to do that, I'm going to use uh, glue dots. And it's always a good idea. Oh, there's one that I missed. Oh, no, it had wrapped around. To always keep your glue dots covered. So I'll just peel back to where I want. Oops. This ribbon is so light. And I'll just trim the edge of that one so it's got a bit of a angle as well. And now we'll just do the inside. So I'm just going to put some white cardstock on some gorgeous grape. And before I do that, I think I'm just going to stamp the, uh, the flowers in the corner. So I'll just get a, my scrap here again. It's not wet, so... We'll uh, get my gorgeous grape and I'll just stamp up the, the flowers again. Okay, and I'm probably not going to put the whole thing on, probably just a bit here. There we go. So we'll Mat this with gorgeous grape.
I just love how with it being matted with the gorgeous grape and then the stamp how much that stands out especially against the basic white oops There we go. And there is our card. So we'll bring out a couple of the other ones here. So I hope you've enjoyed this edition of Paper Crafting with Tracy. Please subscribe to the channel and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest at Paper Crafting with Tracy. Happy stamping!